we're back long overdue for our coffee chat because you, as we can see by looking how bronzed and beautiful you look, Bryce, you've had a week away, haven't you? Yes, it was awesome. I, I just, Florida is just, my heart is in Florida right now. I never thought we, you know, in the United States, we always used to make fun of Florida. You know, you can, uh, you can, there's a game where you can type in your birth date and put Florida man and see what some man got arrested for in Florida on your birthday. But it's literally, um, I mean, I have my DeSantis shirt on right now. It's literally, which says make America, Florida. Um, yeah, which literally, uh, yeah, just, it's just nice to be in a, in a world where you can be a human being and you don't have to worry about all this crazy nonsense and you can just talk to people and hug people and no one thinks you're weird and no one thinks you're crazy because you don't, you know, so, so thank you, DeSantis. Oh my God. Yeah, it is. It's really, I am freezing over here today. It's gone really cold again in the UK again. So hence I'm sitting here shivering, but, and if everyone sees a smoke wafting across, it is my incense sticks. There might be some orbs and little mystery people in there as well, but I am smoking incense. So don't panic. Um, So, One of the things we wanted to talk about today was integrity. And what you just said there really hit home to me because this is the week of David Icke's 70th birthday. Happy birthday, David Icke. And I just listened to a tribute from a lot of people on him. And I felt really emotional because what you've just said about Florida, you know, people used to take the mickey out or the piss out of Florida. Look at what people like David Icke have been through. And he has stood in his integrity and his truth And now he's got millions of us across the globe that are agreeing with him. And for me, he is the, you know, what an example of integrity. There's a few others we could mention as well. But it's what these people have been through is just off the scale, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And, I, you know, as we were saying, I'm going to read a quote here because I think this the person that left this quote or this comment on my interview with Jamie Soleil, who is going to be with us eventually too. Um, she, this woman um, summed it up and cause it, living in your integrity is easier in thought than it is in action. It's so much yeah. easier to hide behind the crowd. It's so much easier to web, to create a web of lies to protect you, but to live in your integrity. Sometimes you're met with a lot of resistance that can be scary. And this lady wrote, and I think this, um, this is true for a lot of us. She said, Jamie's courage extends far beyond those of her former inner, inner circle or even her skating peers. She is the lucky one. She is the awakened one, the light worker, the powerful one, the one that makes her more so in her gracious humility in the face of all of her losses. She has held the line when so many others caved in. That's another reason they have shunned her. Her courage reminds them of their weakness. Her boldness reminds them of their conformity. She has been set apart. And the hard part about being set apart is the isolation and the loneliness. But this is where we grow. This is where how we learn how to balance both light and dark and not everyone can. It just makes me emotional reading that it because me. it is her, the, your courage for everybody. Your courage reminds people of their weakness, you know, and that's, I think when um, people stand in their integrity, that that takes courage and it freaks people out when they see somebody doing that and taking the arrows and taking the mudslinging and they still stand tall with their head held high. Like David Icke has done for many years, bless his heart. Thank God he's being vindicated right now. I know. I know. And, and only to certain people watching, there's still a lot of people. And that really made me emotional what you just read then. And whoever wrote that comment, good for you. And you, we, you and I say it a lot, but our listeners and anyone who takes the time to add something that is moving the world forward to the place we want to be in because we can't have it both ways. We all talk about a lot of spiritual stuff and us all being connected, but that means are you making a decision on a day-to-day basis with all aspects of your life that are moving us forward to the new world that we're creating or are you slipping back into old habits? And don't get me wrong, we all do slip back into old habits. I certainly do. Anyway, but, you know, when someone, whoever made that comment and took the time to do that, they have made a step vibration and that can be the difference between someone carrying on and not because you and I talked, you know, it's easy for us. No one knew who we were apart from in our own little, little micro bubbles before we started doing this. We didn't really have anything to lose, but people like Jamie Soleil, um, David, all the big names that, that are existing well-known people in their own rise. They've had so much to use. And by them showing that courage, it is 
it is literally gives everyone else a different the courage to just do whatever they're able to to step forward to step up to the plate yeah. and it, you need these people that are going to be those shining lights to show what's possible absolutely i know like i told her in our the blue check mark people um sean stone too these people that already had a platform before all this happened and they they stepped up and said i need to stand in my truth i need to speak the truth because the people you call crazy they're correct they're right you know and so i my my massive respect to those people who who because i know i mean and the, the crap that we've taken catherine is nothing compared to what they've been through and i know how hard it's been for us to get the the pushback and stuff like that but but as i said like my twitter following is all of you guys like that was, exactly. i hardly ever get any bad comments on twitter because it's all of you guys i i built it off of esoteric atlanta so you know it, it does take a lot of courage it takes courage to admit when your ego's in the way because sometimes the ego will trick you into into you you'll lie to yourself in order to preserve your own sense of self-worth because even sometimes when you stand in the truth and you have that backlash especially from people that you love it can be very painful and very scary and so sometimes the ego tries to work around that instead of uh instead of living in that integrity so even just in your daily lives when you realize you've screwed up and you need to apologize or when you realize um you weren't you know to have that integrity that takes courage it takes courage to do that yeah and self-awareness is key to everything. You know, we can't move forward in any way without that level of self-awareness. And also having really good friends like we to each other, we can we can be really honest with each other and pick each other up on things if we're not seeing it themselves. And, you know, I definitely notice still my ego kicking in, in in certain situations. And then that's really great where one where I recognize it myself and also where I've got some really good friends who say, hey, <laughs> you know, and because you need that. And that is what being a good friend is. Being a good friend to me and um, standing in your integrity is, you know, having those awkward conversations, putting yourself in those situations when you know in your heart that it's right to to stand up for what you believe in you know most people will stand up to bullies or or will not see an animal being abused or a child or something but it's like those decisions that you take every minute of every day are what defines you and we all know that when we're living out of balance with our own integrity and not being honest with ourselves it, it's really difficult. It puts a huge, huge pressure on yourself spiritually, emotionally, and physically, doesn't it? Yeah. When you are out of alignment, it's, um, I was actually talking about this with our friend, Stephanie, um, you know, when we, even with the active exercise, when we find like our body is out of alignment, normally that means something in our soul is out of alignment because the energetic body is now projecting that onto the physical because the physical can be the GPS system. And so, yes, there is, there are times when your spirit, your soul can be out of alignment because you're not being integral with yourself and your own, you're not, you're not settling yourself into the truth. You might know the truth, but you're, Re you're acting in a way that you're ignoring it. And if that makes sense. And so that truth is still there. And so it's going to nag at you and it's going to push you out of alignment until you actually sit down and, and settle into it. And it's something that I have been really kind of getting um, aggravated with, I think. And maybe this is because I've had 15 years of, of literally working on, I'm not done. We're you're never done working on yourself, but I think sometimes too, in the spiritual uh, awakening and, and its integrity and all we think we look at all these tarot card readers and dowsers and we think that's spirituality that's not that's just communication with the other side spirituality is working on yourself is working on your own self without the projection of the external and that is finding that integrity within yourself you know dowsing is not going to give you integrity cards aren't going to get you have to find that within you and um and then you have to stand in that and it's interesting uh jamie said something yesterday our interview just to give you guys an example where she talked about she had an underactive thyroid yeah and when she started speaking her truth all this well she said all of a sudden she didn't have an issue anymore and her doctor or her or the person who was helping her said um that's because you're speaking your truth it's so true and we see this so many times and i see it a lot in the animal world as well where if the humans in the animals' lives aren't speaking their um, truth or living in alignment with their sole purpose, with their integrity, and that's going to be different for all of us. You know, 
integrity isn't something where there's a right or wrong. It's going to be very individual to each of us. But we know, we know deep down when we're not in integrity with ourselves. And if you're not in integrity with yourself and your own core values, you can't possibly be integrity, be acting with integrity to others that you interact with. And that's why there's always a reminder, whether it's our physical body, whether it's what we're attracting into our lives, whether it's what our animals are displaying, there's always a clue there if we're open to looking out to it and listening to it. And when we don't listen to it, I mean, I, I've got plenty of examples where I've known something deep down, but I've chosen to hide it because it's sort of been put in the too difficult to handle box for me. And then when I do that, I can see the signals get louder and louder and louder until I eventually address it. You know, there's only so long you can bury your head in the sand. And I think what we've seen a lot over the last few years is we've seen all of us, so many people just learning so much by listening to other people, taking in other opinions, other thoughts, which are perhaps opening our mind. But as we keep saying, there comes a time where you've got to then say, well, what resonates with me? Yeah. You know, what, what, do, what is right for me? How do I want to lose my life moving forward? How am I going to react to these situations? Yes, absolutely. And, um, and a lot of that too, I, when, before we signed on, because I knew we were going to be talking about this, I was thinking a lot about um, the idea of even the, with integrity, the idea of even boundaries, knowing yeah. your own boundaries. And I know when I went through my trauma therapy, I had never really thought about boundaries before because I was allowing people just to take advantage of me all the time. No one had ever talked to me about that. And there are hard boundaries and there are soft boundaries. And that's going to be different for every person. And I think sometimes when you are living in your own integrity, you're living within your own boundaries. You know, you, you for, you know, you, you have a hard boundary where if somebody crosses a line, if something's done that doesn't resonate with you, you put a hard, that's a hard boundary. And if you, if you acknowledge that boundary you've established for yourself, you're living in your integrity. And of course, then there's softer boundaries that are more negotiable in life. But, um, but so I, I just thinking that's a, that for me, when I was healing and going through my healing journey, that was a great place to start in learning my own self too. Like, what do I tolerate and what don't I tolerate? What is negotiable? What isn't? And when I stick within that boundary, that's when I feel more aligned with myself is because I'm honoring my own self, you know, and, and allowing myself to have healthy, healthy communication with other people. And that helps me stay integral. So that's something I would suggest people figure out your boundaries, you know, yeah. especially with integrity. I mean, we've talked off camera about stuff like this and just sticking to what you know is right. Um, and, and being able to, to handle the, th the pushback you get, you know, cause yeah. abusers uh, don't like boundaries. They want, they want to push those boundaries harder. So, you yeah, know, and it's very easy to project your boundaries onto someone else. And, you know, I'm sure we've all done it, but the whole point is, is your boundaries as an individual are yours, but they'll also change as you go through different stages in your life as well, or go through different experiences. So, um, for example, at the moment, I was having that conversation, funny enough, this morning with someone about boundaries. And it is so, so important because if your boundaries aren't clear, it's like um, training with your dog or, or teaching your children something or what you get, what, you, what you're getting reflected back to you in your life is a direct reflection of where you're sitting with your integrity and with your boundaries. And, and we might not like to hear that because it's very easy to say it's Biden's fault or it's Boris Johnson's fault or it's this person's fault or it's that. But it's not. At a micro level, it all comes down to us. And I think for me, some people sort of don't like that. For me, it's the opposite. For me, it's absolutely perfect because it means there's nothing that I can't change. It's there's a power it's just a sovereignty and self-power and awareness because you, it, at the very least, you can always change how you're reacting to what's happening in your life. And when you change that reaction, your emotions change, your energy changes and everything else starts shifting. Absolutely. It's, it's a total plot twist power move. And I think that when you realize that you are in total control of that, and it doesn't mean that when you realize you're in control of that, that you're going to figure it out overnight. It's a process no. of having to like break down your own um, illusions that you have about yourself too. That's part of the healing process. And it's, it's, it's so, it can be very hard to do, but it's so rewarding because you learn so much about yourself and, and what in you being able to hold again that sovereignty 
throughout this whole experience that we're all going through. And, and it's kind of, I know uh, Mark has said this before, it's almost like we're in spiritual quarantine. It's almost kind of like, you know, before this point in our history that we know of, um, whenever one country was having issues, we'll just say, cause we're on YouTube issues, people could leave and go to another country, right? That's kind of the idea of what America was founded on, even though we're now questioning that history, but for, but for, for a lack of a better example, that's kind of what the co country of America, the United States was founded on. But now we're in a situation where we have no, there's nowhere to go. Exactly. And isn't that the perfect scenario? Because that's when you can't run from yourself anymore. Exactly. And we all have to get to a stage. And, and of course, if, if, so, if you're recovering from a major illness or you've just lost a loved one, that might not be the time that you choose to work on yourself because you're in survival mode. Yeah. But when you are at a stage where you are forced, and it is part of human nature, that's why people like Joe Dispenser and Wim Hof do their work. You know, there's part of human nature where sometimes we have to let the messages to us get really, really loud. And, and don't beat ourselves up about that. If that's, there's a reason for why we're all behaving like that and that, you know, the mass psychosis programming that we've all spoken about to a blue in the tail. But at some stage, once you've realized and accepted that, I don't talk about that anymore because I'm not using that as an excuse anymore because I can recognize it. I don't always recognize it. And when I don't recognize it, something goes wrong. And then I'm like, okay, where's this come from? So um, it's, I think it's really important. There's a difference, I think, between not beating yourself up because what you don't know, you don't know. But once you do know it, then you've got to then put your big boy pants on and take action. Once you know better, you do better. Responsibility, yeah. yeah. And that's doing better for yourself. It all starts. It literally, and that's one thing I know we've talked about this. I'll talk about some blue in the face because it frustrates me. You know, we've been trained to think that we have to have a savior. We have to have someone come in on a white night and like save us. And that's, and I've, I've said all the time, don't sit around eating popcorn, waiting for the Kennedys to do something. If that's what you're waiting for, that something is never going to happen. You have to save yourself. And when we all start working on ourselves, that vibrational, it, it, I mean, I use your example all the time, Catherine, we talked about the tuning forks. If one mm -hmm. tuning fork is up here, it's going to pull the other one up. So by you just working on yourself, that's going to ricochet out, out of you. And it's probably going to inspire everybody else to start working on. And there's no, and I want to, I know people get overwhelmed sometimes when they think about self-healing, but the thing is, is like, there's no, you're never going to be done healing. So no. just, if you're just working on yourself, you're doing it. There's no finish line. No, I promise you, no balloons like fall from the ceiling and all of a sudden God <laughs> comes down and you're like, you're done. No, it's never done. It's never done. So, but just by starting that process, you're already by taking that. I mean, again, that's a power move. How much of a power move is that to say, you know what, bad guys, I'm going to take that power back and I'm going to fix myself. Thank you. You leave yeah. it completed. Completely. And I think, you know, it would be so boring for all of us if it was easy. You know, oh, yeah. anyone who's had children, it's not easy. It's never easy deciding if you get the choice <laughs> that when you want children, because you're never ready, you're never responsible enough to be a parent, you've never got enough money, you're never sorted enough, you're never organized enough. Um, but you manage, you manage and you do the best you can. And then you cock up and you apologize to your kids later when they're old enough and when they're parents of their own and they realize oh it's not as easy as it looks and 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 your dogs and your cats and your guinea pigs and your horses and your turtles they don't mind when you cock up they don't sit there a year later saying well remember that time you did this no they're like just take me for another walk and I'll know everything's forgiven and I think it is very hard we sort of can look at ourselves and I certainly do it all the time. I had a conversation actually with Mark this morning. You know, I can notice things going out of balance in my life. So now I'm getting better at recognizing it. It's taken me a long while, folks, <laughs> a long while. But I don't mind. It doesn't matter if it's taken me. It, it doesn't matter whether a particular lesson comes to you. As you said before, the universe doesn't care how long you take. It just cares you get there at the right time for you. So... And there's always something you can do. So there's the beauty of the technology that we often criticize is there's so many free resources out there. Yeah. So many free resources out there. I mean, I've, I've been going on a lot the last few weeks because I love it about the Wim Hof stuff and the breathing in the showers. It costs you nothing. Everyone can do some study on a breathing technique that resonates with them that will instantly change their physiological state, their emotional state, 
and that will resonate and you can see how you do it because anyone who's ridden horses knows that you know they pick up on your breathing and your energy immediately so and anyone can take a cold shower oh okay. yeah okay so i do that every nothing. morning i take a cold shower ice cold shower every morning and people think i'm crazy but i know he talks about that too but that is something that has literally changed i mean i i i'm not a, a stranger to cry uh, uh cryotherapy i was about to say cryotherapy <laughs> cryotherapy <laughs> i'm not a stranger to cryotherapy which is the refrigerator you go into for where it's like negative something fair i don't know how cold it gets but it's really cold and you're in there for three minutes and that really has helped it's amazing and, and i'll tell you too Catherine. and i i mean i'll admit it these last couple of days not everybody knows i get up early and it's never super easy to get up early you get up early too yeah but these last couple of days i've had a really hard time getting out of bed I've me done too it. but it's been like my body feels heavy and i realized today when i was uh practicing i was like I think I'm, I think there's some depression. Like, I think I, I'm going through something and just recognizing that just instead of saying, God, why can't I get out of bed? Just recognizing that something is shifting and perspective in myself is shifting. All of a sudden I started to feel a little bit more liberated, just acknowledging that. And then I took my cold shower <laughs> afterwards. Yeah. So, you know, and then sit down and journal and just be like, okay, so that's probably what I'm going to do this afternoon. Like, why am I feeling this heaviness? What is what is going on in me that needs to now be addressed? It's not about ignoring it or trying to immediately fix it. It's, it's recognizing it and, and, and figuring out where that, that alignment is. And that's part of being human guys. We, we didn't come down here just to like drink Coca-Cola and watch reality TV. We came no down way. here to like learn, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, although and contribute and contribute and every person that's doing something is contributing in their own way. We need all these levels of contribution. There is no hierarchy in being a good person. You know, there really so isn't. And I think that's all we need to do is be good and kind to ourselves and others. And you're allowed to go off balance. It's absolutely fine to go off balance because everything, we are living in a duality at the moment and sometimes you need to take yourself off balance consciously or subconscious uh, subconsciously or consciously to be able to say oh this really does work oh this is really serving me nothing in in life is designed to stay the same all nope. the time and i think that's really really important i'm speaking to a client about weight there's not a single animal in the whole of the kingdom that is designed to be the same way winter and summer and yet as humans, we've decided that we should be a certain weight and that's what's acceptable. Well, any animal survival, you know, coming into the winter, if you're an area of the world where you have seasons, coming into the winter, all your instincts are saying store, store fat, store fat, store fat. You know, if you look at um, and then you go through the winter and it gets really harsh and resources are, are scarce and it's cold and you lose body weight and you come out a lot skinnier. You know, there's ups and downs in all aspects of life. And what we tend to do as humans is we try and smooth it out. And for me, that's where it goes wrong. You know, Catherine, that's so funny. Um, that's what the yoga, the yoga sutras say that that is the baseline of human suffering is mm. because nature are bought anything in nature. Prakriti is, is the laws of nature. It has a birth, a life and a death. Therefore, it's always changing. It's always ebbing and flowing. And we try to control it and keep it. We get confused with the eternal side of us versus the Prakriti side of us. And that's where human suffering comes from is this need of like to control something that can't be really that is is supposed to move it's supposed to ebb and flow and part of finding that peace is learning how to move with the ebbing and the flowing as as it comes so it's uh you know the sutras are written five thousand years ago so i don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that humans still are struggling with this still <laughs> with that. and it is struggling and you never see again i know i'm not saying all animals you know everything's got their place and nature is cool. You know, nature is half. Only the strongest do survive. Whether you believe in the battle of the fittest, you've only got to go and look out on the plains and see which one gets eaten yeah. to know that there is some truth in that. And, so, and you know, if you're a, a dog in the wild and you're, or a prey animal, even worse, and you injure yourself and you can't run away, you've had it because you're either going to die of infection. I mean, watch the Hunger Games. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, or you're going to be caught. Um, so, but... I think this is this obsession um, of us humans of, of having to control everything. And I think it's really relevant to what we're going on through now. So 
there's a huge, huge thirst for knowledge about what's going on, what's going on at the moment. And I think there's a lot of positivity in that because the fact that there's so many people asking questions now and questioning the narrative and looking at the world through you know, eyes, it's a massive po- positive, but we don't have to be able to control it all. If we can control ourselves and control our own sovereignty and our own choices, then we're okay. Yeah. Absolutely. And just live in that integrity. Absolutely. Well, I was going to say, and I guess the audience can answer this too, talking about the breath, because the breath is connected to the nervous system. Mm. Um, and I know we're possibly going to be going deeper into that and soon with another guest, but Catherine, if you, and if the audience is more interested in going into deeper dive into breathing and the different channels through the body, I would be totally down to doing up at shows with you on that Catherine, because you did that breath, learning how to breathe properly is, is something that can change something right away. Change something so right away. I think I'd love that. And please let us know in the comments below if that's something you'd be interested in or not. And there's so many different ways that you can do it and so many techniques, but they're all the same thing. You know, if you listen to Wim Hof, what he's achieving with his breath is the same as what Joe Dispenza is achieving with his meditation and the breath in there. So there's a, a lot of things, but where I love it, I mean, I, I don't do it into the same level as you do, Bryce, but I've been doing it for years because when you're working with abused or stressed animals, you don't need to spend a penny. So I'm a natural health therapist, and, and so I have a lot of tools in my toolkit, but the most important thing in all our toolkit to me that outranks any you know, med bed, device, supplement or anything is our breath because you can alkalize your body, you can control your stress levels, you can control your autonomic and sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system with your breath. And But very importantly, you control your coherence level and your energy field. And if you want to know whether it's working or not, get an animal in the field, in the room, whatever it might be for me. I mean, at the moment, I I should have a video of it. I've got to, I'd need someone there holding it or a stand. Perhaps I could set up a scan to do it. I will do it so you can all have a giggle at us. So every evening, my daughter, my husband and I, because my son's not at home at the moment, we're doing our Wim Hof breathing. And because, okay, ideally you do it in the morning. We're not all together in the morning, so we'll do it in the evening. And as soon as we start there's a cat on your chest, there's one on your head, there's a dog in your arm, because they pick up instantaneously that change of energy. And it's quite difficult to concentrate because it is just absolutely adorable. But if you want to know whether it's working, get an animal in there and they'll soon tell you whether you're changing your energetic state. Ravi, um, my dog, Ravi, will. I know that I'm breathing properly in my practice because he'll start snoring beside my mat because it relaxes him so much. But guys, I mean, it is, I mean, in Sanskrit, breath work is called pranayama. And what prana means is life force, your energy, and yama is extension. So they're telling you that your breathing is extending your life's capacity, whether that means a longer life or the quality of life is up to the practitioner to decide what that means. Mm. But it is so true. And just being able and to watch your breath, because if you're somebody that is having a hard time finding boundaries or having a hard time finding your integrity, watch your breathing around certain situations, because your breathing is going to tell you how you really feel about certain situations because it's connected to the nervous system. So if you find yourself holding your breath, now we hold our breath for excitement too, but you have to recognize the feeling around the holding up, but fear as well, the the panic, um, whether the breathing starts getting faster, then you're going to feel your heart rate. So that is a good indication if you've lost connection to the intuition inside of you, just is paying attention to your breath, paying attention to it. Yeah. It's, it's so exciting. There's so much to do. So, you know, for people, everyone watching is in a different situation, different environment, different budgets available to everything. And what I just want to say is there's just transformational stuff you can do and get access to that will cost you nothing that can really, really take you forward. And um, I would say have fun trying and seeing what works for you. So do let us know whether that's something you'd like us to cover more, because for me, it's just the absolute cornerstone of everything. Oh, absolutely. Um, and I, I 
just to, you know, and I've still got a long way to go with it. And I'm sort of, you know, sort of aware of it. And it's something that I've really had to, when I first started doing it, I had no idea just how badly I was breathing. And by badly, I just mean I wasn't serving my physical body, my emotional body, my spiritual body by being breathing so shallowly. And, and, but just by learning a few simple techniques, it's improved so many aspects of my sort of physical health, my emotional control, etc. And just knowing, I mean, I said this to Stephanie one day, because I've, I've been having her doing some physical work. And I just said, well, you know, the inhale is a power. It's a power. The inhale is pranic. It's it's rising. And I was like, you know, if you do a handstand, if you try to do a handstand on exhale, you're not going to go anywhere. You're going to you're going to deflate. And the look on her face, like like she's not even realizing that. Yeah, that's the power. Pay attention to the way your 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 body intuitively knows how to so start paying. That's the play. You know, yeah, you don't have to buy anything yet. You don't have to like. You could just start paying attention to yeah. how you're breathing. The nose is going to calm you down. Mouth breathing is going to stress you out. You got the left nostril is feminine. The right is masculine. If the right is clogged, put your a fist under your armpit. Hold it down. It'll unclog the right opposite for the left. Certain times of the day, the right's going to be stronger than the left. You can start playing with this to learn how your energy is moving because that's where that energy is coming from is that breath. And it's so, and so many people, especially in yoga, start yoga and they're like, oh, that's the boring part of yoga. No, it's not. Yeah. That's the mat. That's when you're like, oh. I have sweat more in pranayama classes than I have in asana classes. Absolutely. It's, it's incredible. incredible. It's incredible. So, um, so I would, yeah. And that's, and you, and that's the beautiful thing is Catherine's right. You don't have to go buy anything. No, you already have it. You don't need to wear any special kit. You don't need to do anything. You know, it's anyone can do it wherever you are. And, you know, I, it's fantastic. I use it a lot when I'm out with the animals and everything, or whether I'm out with other people's animals, you know, you can do it any place, any time, and it's, it's free and it's accessible to everyone. So, I, I just love it. And I think um, it helps getting it back, circling it back to the integrity side of things is when you become aware of your breath, you become very, very well aware of what's really going on with yourself, with your emotions. Yep. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Abs absolutely. I mean, that is um, just to give you guys just one more example. When we do backbending, people panic and they stop breathing. And then we teach them to keep breathing even when they're panicked. So you start to recognize when that breath stops and that's when you're panicking. So absolutely, it's it's the biggest plot twist there is. And that's the one thing they tried to. Absolutely. They and know. They know. Got horses, we don't want to see any tight or restrictive nose bands on your horses because don't stop a prey animal trying to breathe. You are asking for trouble. <laughs> It's very disrespectful, but can you imagine the way their stress levels go up? So look at ours. Look what happened to us. Every time I had to, like the few times I absolutely had to, my stress level went up. Mine goes up just watching other people do that. <laughs> so, I know. In all seriousness, I'm just like, oh no, you know. So I think, um, yeah, just become aware of it. Let us know what you're noticing, and and you know enjoy the journey for all these things enjoy the journey I love it my daughter and I've got a challenge at the moment where we're having to you know not having to choosing to learn a new skill every month or two and it's really really good fun and it's such good fun to be a beginner in something because there's no pressure there's no. no pressure at all beginners well I will tell you guys so as a teacher I will say the easiest students to teach are the beginners and the advanced students because both the beginner and the advanced know that they know nothing it's the intermediate that's the real asshole <laughs> that you yeah. don't want to teach because they think they know everything so it's the advanced and the beginner so it's a great place to be a beginner because you are right there with that advanced student too where the advanced student knows they know nothing yeah it's it's so. there's no pressure at all when you're a beginner so you can just have fun and enjoy the process so and take the time it takes for you so yeah. Thank you so much. We will be back in a minute. Quick toilet break and we will be back, hopefully, with a very exciting guest. So thanks so much for anyone who's watching. Let us know whether you'd be interested in more breathing stuff or not. And also let us know what you're noticing it does for you and what, what techniques work for you and yeah. how that affects you and your animals. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you soon, Catherine. <laughs> and I'll see you guys Bye. soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye.